before you upgrade to, to connect, you have to disable Active Directory and re-enable it after you're done with the upgrade. Any users who use the contacts tab in 14.2, which should be every user, if you have a group called favorites, you need to rename that group because there's a, there's a default favorites group in connect. And any user who has that favorites group, will not, those users will not be moved over to the, to the connect client. If you rename them something else, it will pull those groups over automatically. So you will want to rename if you have a group called favorites in your, in your contacts tab. The other big one is if you have ECC, you have agent IDs that your, that your agents log in with. Those agent IDs, if they're set to the extension number, which I would say almost every short of customer I've ever seen is set to extension numbers, those agent IDs have to be changed to match the client ID in, 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 in the PBX side because short tells merging more of the functionality between the two. So the user IDs have to be updated in ECC before you upgrade to connect. One thing they have changed is Shortel is getting stricter on the password policies inside. You can lower it, but by default, the complexity is a lot more than change me used to be in the system. So eight characters, one uppercase, one lowercase, one number, and one special character is the new default password setting. So unless you lower that, that's going to be the new password requirements from your users when you do upgrade and they launch Connect for the first time. They're going to get a password um, a new password requirement where they're going to, have to pick a new password. So that's the complexity uh, requirement out of the box from um, Connect. And as Mike mentioned, soft phone and video license are included for all users in Connect. So the one thing on that is Shortel is going to issue you license keys for that, but you will have to go turn those on on a per user you know, basis that you want to turn that feature on. We will have to turn those, those licenses on for the users that you want to allow them. So it won't turn them on by default. Uh, we will have to enable those licenses um, for your end users. So the communicator, like Mike mentioned, becomes the Connect client. You know, it changes from what you see on the left to what you see on the right. If you click the green arrow, the call handling modes are now going to be called avail availability state. So the modes button on your short phones it be, gets named as state instead of mode. So that's one, you know, one big change. Um, if you do notice also, they added a new vacation mode. So they left, you know, um, most of the modes in there, but you see extended absence became vacation and then they added a do not disturb mode. So you actually increased one more mode from five to six going from 14.2 to connect. You still have every single mode has a different call handling um, or voicemail greeting and, and settings and everything that you can still do. So not a lot changed on that piece, but modes went to, went to states now. So as you're using the connect client, it started out really small. And then as I selected people, people replaces contacts. It kind of expanded and you see all my statuses in the middle, you know, the, my, the icons telling you if they're on the phone, if they're in a meeting. But then as I selected the user, it bumped out another window to show you Josh's contact information, um, the green icon for phone. So as you're using the application, it's going to expand as you use it. And then as you're not using it anymore, you can minimize the windows back down um, to the smaller window. But what I have noticed is that it, the connect client does take up if when you're actively using it, it's going to use up more space. When you're not using it, it's going to use about the same amount of space as the Connect client, maybe a little bit less than the communicator client um, used to. So it, but it does expand and, and shrink as as you use the client. The ECC agent toolbar, which I think what we had a question earlier, the the about integrating. So the agent toolbar right now is integrated into communicator. Well, this is now a new standalone web app called the Agent Interaction Center. As you can see here, there's more information that you can display inside the application. You have on the bottom, you have different information you can show about your about your queues. So do you want to show, you know, how many calls are in queue? What's the average wait time? But then I can also show information in the middle of the screen. So if we collect information about a user, I can display it back to an agent. So I can show an account number or an account name. If we database dipped and grabbed information, I can display it right here to the agent. I also have some call control, so you don't necessarily have to switch back to the Connect client in order to, to hang up a call or to conference a call or transfer a call. They have, they have started building some of that functionality into this with the goal of, of adding a few more functionality into this client so your, your agents wouldn't necessarily have to be always have the Connect client and the um, ECC 
agent interface up at the same time. They wouldn't have to necessarily have them both running at the same time. They could just use the agent interaction center and they'll have capability to do more stuff. Like you don't see a mute option on here. I know the mute button is coming. Um, they added the transfer in the conference, but which weren't in the, in the initial ones. Um, you have the request, you can raise your hand to request supervisor support. So they are adding more functionality and that's the goal is to add a, a few more call control to this so that the day-to-day -day stuff is, is still built in, you know, is built into this one interface. Shoreware director becomes connect director. Not a, you know, not a ton of stuff has changed here. They kind of took the diagnostic and monitoring that you saw in 14.2 and use that same layout for the rest of director. A lot of the stuff is still in the same. You see under users, you still have the same stuff underneath users. The biggest thing is they changed underneath features. They moved a lot of stuff like auto attendance, system directory, hunt groups, uh, route points, work groups, schedules. They moved all of those under a, a tab called features and kind of put them all together, which definitely made it a little bit cleaner to find a lot of that stuff in one, in, in one section as opposed to you know, spreading them all out. From an IT level, you know, there is going to be some change to, to what it looks like, though, so you'll want to kind of plan on, uh, um, on a little bit of training for your IT team as that interface did change uh, a little bit.